Well, we've seen farming protests all over Europe, haven't we? Beginning really in a very, very big way, at least this round of it, with the Netherlands and on, of course, to France and to Germany. And then, of course, the farmers turned up in Brussels and, well, caused absolute mayhem, setting fire to vehicles and goodness knows what else. Indeed, the farmers blocked the major eight arterial rolls, roads in and out of Paris, so much so that the president had to intervene. Well, we've had a couple of farming protests. We've seen one in Canterbury, a couple in Dover. Well, today, the farmers came to London. Now, I have to say, unlike the scenes that we saw in Brussels and Paris, these were a pretty law-abiding bunch, as you would pretty much expect from British farmers. But don't misunderstand their behaviour for the passion that they feel. And they're a pretty angry group of people. So back to the beginning of this, we were in the common agricultural policy for nearly 50 years. And Brussels dictated pretty much what British farming priorities would be through a system of subsidies. We've left the European Union, we're in charge, but net zero and many other reasons are making farmers' lives difficult. I'm joined live by Douglas Turner, farmer who is in Parliament Square on his tractor as I speak. Douglas, uh, two things. I've lost him. I've lost him. I don't believe it. We had a real live farmer. We had a real live farmer at the steering wheel and we've lost him. The one thing, though, that confused me is what was the primary motive of those turning up for Save British Farming? Because there was a whole mixture of symbols and slogans. Some of them are not happy with the new farm payment system. They say, you know, we've gone from subsidy on what you plant to a variety of environmental subsidies. Some farmers told me those payments are coming through very, very late, uh, and when they're hard up, that is quite difficult to deal with. Other farmers are worried about cheap imports, worried about what new trade deals we might choose to do around the world. Other farmers talking very, very strongly about food security. And what are we doing? What is this, sim this, this message we're giving that to uh, stop putting out methane and carbon dioxide, we have to reduce the number of cattle that we farm? So I picked up a series of messages, lots of frustration, but all being done in the most incredibly peaceful and very, I thought, British way. Well, Liz Webster is the founder of the Save British Farming campaign and joins me live in the studio. I was out there watching. I mean, it was all really rather... It was well done, but the passion's there, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, lovely to meet you, Nigel. Good to meet you. What confused me, you may have heard what I said there, all sorts of different signs on the tractors. You know, signs about, you know... No farmers, no food. Signs about cheap imports. Signs about the behaviour of the supermarkets. Issue after issue after issue. And, and I think the most... I think the commonest sign, really, that I saw was around food security. This feeling that government aren't that bothered how much of our own food we produce? Well, I'd go further than that. They're not bothered at all. <laughs> not bothered at all. So, is, is, so, 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 so do you feel that agriculture is a very low priority? Well, when Boris Johnson took office in 2020, there was a leaked memo, I don't know if you remember, the Daily Mail reported it, that Britain doesn't need farmers anymore. And, you know, to this day, I think that's exactly what is unfolding. But as we know, with, you know, the promises to bring in cheaper food yeah. for Britain, we always had the cheapest food actually in Europe and the highest standards. Um, and now we have, it's not necessarily cheap imports, they're substandard imports. They're imports which are of lower quality than we produce is, ourselves. Is, is and they in, are undercutting us and is, putting us out Is, is that in terms of animal husbandry or what do you mean exactly by that? Yeah, everything. It, it's down to how the animals are kept. It's also down to how the food is grown, uh, whether it's um, um, arable or whether it's vegetables, fruits or animals. Um, animals are also... Uh, regularly administers with um, antibiotics. We only use antibiotics mm. if, the, if mm. the animals are ill. So all of those things mean that for the competition, they're able to uh, make it, make that, that product at a cheaper price than we are. Um, and we're getting um, undercut. And not only that, even within the UK, which is astonishing, the English farmer is the worst off because the Welsh farmers 
and the Scottish and the Northern Ireland farmers still have food subsidies. The English government yeah. actually withheld the impact assessment about what SFI and ELMS is going to do. They started removing our subsidies um, as soon as uh, we left yeah, the European I mean, Union. It, it's, and it's so shame, we are by it? far the yeah. worst off. Yeah, I mean, we still. Because Welsh farmers and Scottish farmers are still getting food subsidy. We are not. And as I see it, the UK is spending three billion a year on farming subsidy, not six billion, but it appears we're not well, doing Boris it. Well, Boris Johnson very promised. He promised us, actually, that out of the European Union, we'd be mm. well looked after and supported, mm. and we'd probably end up with more subsidy. Well, that hasn't no. happened. Far from but it. But I think we're spending pretty much the same, but I'll get Jacob Rees Mogg in on this in a moment's time. Uh, no, but Jacob likes uh, hormone-fed meat from Australia. That's no, 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 no. <laughs> what Jacob wants... And all the farmers no, remember no, that no, too. You're wrong, Liz. What Jacob wants is what I want, which is fair labelling. And one of the other complaints in Parliament Square today was about, was about food labelling. So this little red tractor that we see when we buy something, does that mean that it's a wholly British or English product? At the moment, what we're seeing is a British flag on imported food... And there's a small print saying product of Brazil or South Africa or so wherever. So how, how does it get a British Because flag it's it? processed here or packaged here. Right. And it's absolutely outrageous. Um, and a lot of people are picking up packets of food thinking it's British mm. and high quality, and it's not. Um, so we think that's really a simple thing that can mm. be fixed yeah, no, no, very, no, 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 very no, quickly. So really, you know, talking to you, being out there earlier on today, and... I've met the odd farmer in a pub in Kent here and there. Um, over the years. Of the Kent today. <laughs> I know they are. No, I haven't drunk with all of them, I promise. But <laughs> it seems there's a whole mass of individual issues. What Everything's is, related. They're all interlinked. Everything's related. But, and it's actually quite simple. But for a campaign to be successful, there has to be one big push, one big drive. What is it here? Is it to get the British government to listen? We're going into an election. Um, the Conservatives really are on borrowed town. How many of them are going to come back next election depends on your former party, whether they split the vote. Um, but we're not just Maybe talking not. to the Tories, we're also Talk talking to Labour, yeah. because we want to see some flesh in on the, on the bones of their manifesto. We want to know what's coming. We are not going to rest on our laurels. This is the beginning. Okay. And what have Labour said so far on agricultural policy? They have uh, guaranteed that there will be a veterinary agreement, and that makes us feel a lot happier. We really don't want to exceed to CPTPP. It means reg regulation, yeah, yeah. harmonisation. It means hormone-fed meat, and we really don't right. want that. Well, very, very. I mean, it'll be indeed. it'll be cataclysmic for us. We won't survive it. I'm going to watch this development, Liz, Liz Webster, very, very carefully indeed. Now, Jacob, you know, we were spending about six billion a year on agricultural subsidy. I used to joke half of it went to France. It wasn't quite half, but a lot did. You know, are we spending the three billion? Well, the problem is that we're spending it on encouraging people not to farm, which seems to me to be a great mistake. We're putting it into these wild um, environmentalist causes rather than saying what we need to do is back farmers to produce food, which I'm strongly in favour of, but I'm not in favour of protectionism and higher prices for consumers because I believe our farmers can compete globally. If I visit some Somerset farmers, they are extremely efficient and highly competitive and innovative, and we do it to encourage the best... And it's a high-end product. It's a high-end product. Which was one of the points uh, and, being made earlier. And that we have to focus on what we are good at. And what our, our protectionism does at the moment is protects Irish beef farmers, French beef farmers and Dutch beef farmers, know, as opposed to buying cheaper beef from Australia. I have no desire Jacob, the to problem, protect the EU problem farms. problem is that we live in the Northern Hemisphere and we have a very difficult climate. So actually, and we know this, because when the Corn Laws were repealed in 1846, we know yeah. darned well what happened to agriculture. It led to cheap bread. It made the society much better. But this has been an argument. This has been an argument going but on the, for 150 but years. It's simply, yes. it's simply wrong. British agriculture didn't collapse at that point. There was a glut in the market 30 years later, which the, comes much Well, obviously, after the things corner. were much yeah. slower in those days. It no, took a no, long no. time for that I, to no, I, Actually, do you know what? The principles of that debate and this debate are not dissimilar. No, that's They're right. They're not they dissimilar. Are, very, very... They're I not always dissimilar. go about the, 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 my favourite that, subject. No, no, right. no, no, no. And it was, it was a wonderful upwelling and grassroots campaign and all the rest of it. But whether we have a Conservative or a Labour government, do you feel... I mean, do you actually think that a Labour government will be any closer or more connected to your community than this Look, Conservative one? the Labour government... It's in their interest to make sure that Britain has got food. And with the way the world is right now, 
Um, mm. We're in a very fragile situation, well, which is why we need food security. And every farmer I know <coughs> talks about food well, we security because we at, understand um, how much less food look, is being We better have a look at net zero commitments yeah, too, but right, another right, time. Right. Net zero, net zero, zero commitments are... Um, that's, um, it'll be, that's yeah, your yeah, yeah. It'll be wind right. farms, it'll be Enough, so enough, bad. enough. We can, argue, we can argue all night about we this. Can, Let's yeah, do that. I'm up for arguing all night. Blooming net zero. I can't even think better. Blooming net zero is a part of this problem. Now...